guys, it's Hope Szymanski here with Digivox, and today we're going to be talking about six characteristics that make up a good and reliable currency. So what do I mean by a good and reliable currency? Basically, what characteristics of a currency make it a good candidate uh, for everyday use. This is purely an educational video uh, meant to give you a little bit more knowledge and background about the world of currency and finance. Uh, this is not official financial advice. We don't give official financial advice at Digifox, um, but we do aim to educate. So let's get started and talk about some of those characteristics of a good and reliable currency. The first one is going to be divisibility. How well does your currency divide into smaller chunks? US dollars are pretty easy to divide as is Bitcoin or any other type of cryptocurrency because it's digital and can be infinitely divided. Um, gold on the other hand is a little bit harder to do that with. Next up, number two, durability. Your currency has to be able to stand the test of time. So for instance, fruit would be a really bad currency. It's not durable. Uh, as it rots very, very easily. Flowers are also not good currency because they die after you cut them uh, very easily um, and they're very fragile, easy to be destroyed. Gold, on the other hand, is very durable. It's an element, it can't be destroyed. You can melt it down, you can reshape it, and it just is always going to exist. So uh, that's an example of a durable currency. Number three, scarcity. Your currency needs to have a limited supply in order to uh, protect against inflation. So for instance, leaves would not be a very good currency because they're everywhere. Anyone can go and just pick them off the trees. The US dollar too arguably isn't scarce as the government can print and does print as much as they want at will. Gold on the other hand has a limited supply and so therefore it is scarce and a good example for uh, the characteristic of scarcity as is Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as normally uh, they have a limited supply that's meant to be mined over a certain amount of time. Um, and they're, they're limited in supply as well. So they're another good example of scarcity. Number four, liquidity. For a currency to be liquid or have liquidity, it either has to be enforced by a governing authority or it has to be widely accepted by the masses. For example, if I went to the grocery store and I attempted to use flowers to purchase my groceries, they would look at me like I'm crazy because flowers are not legal tender uh, in the United States. The US dollar is a good example of a liquid currency. It's widely accepted in the US and in many other countries as well. Number five, fungibility. Basically what that means is one ounce of gold equals one ounce of gold equals one ounce of gold, always, all the time, no exceptions. So uh, one dollar, my one dollar bill can't equal more or less than your one dollar bill. It has to always equal the same thing. In the past, uh, with gold and other precious metals, people have tried to like melt them down, uh, basically dilute them and then call them the same thing, basically inflating them. Uh, and then basically that ounce of gold wasn't equal to another ounce of gold. They weren't equal in value in terms of gold. Bitcoin's a good example of this as well. Uh, half a Bitcoin is always gonna equal half a Bitcoin. It's not like my supply of Bitcoin, uh, like my one Bitcoin isn't gonna be worth more than your one Bitcoin. They're always gonna be equal the same thing. And last but not least, number six, portability. Your currency has to be able to be portable, has to be able to be easy to carry around and transfer and send across the world. A digital currency is a good example of this. Cryptocurrency is another really good example of this. It's all digital, it's on your phone, it's on your computer. It's, it's, it's not a physical object that you have to carry around and you can send it across the world. It's really, really easy. A really bad example of this is gold and precious metals. They're really heavy, they're really cumbersome to carry around and transfer, and you can't send them across the globe. It's, it's a physical object. Same thing with like coins and paper money. It's easier to carry around, um, but you, it's hard to send across the world unless you mail it, um, which is easier than mailing gold, um, but digital currency is by far a lot easier and a much better example of portability. Well, that about wraps up our video here about the six characteristics of a good and reliable currency. I hope that helped out a little bit and was educational. Uh, feel free to share this video and give us a like if you enjoyed it. Um, and as always, feel free to contact us in our support app or on our website at digifox.finance if you have any questions at all. Take care guys, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.